Hi, I'm JB. I'm showing you my answer to saving money on heat. This is my homemade outside wood burner. Granted, anybody can go to the store and buy one of these things. We both know that they're eight to ten thousand dollars. This one here is going to be a three thousand dollar one. Come on in, I'll show it to you. As you can see, it burns pretty clean. The outside of the building was handmade by me, siding that I got from somebody, doors that I got off of a construction job, had to have the concrete slab poured, 10 inches thick, we got, we got lights, we got switches to shut off the blowers for when we load the wood, manual gauge to tell me where, where I am on the water temperature. A gauge for tell me where I am on the water, on the water in the tank. By the way, that used four gallons of water so far this season, so a month and a half. Basically, this is a big square tank, about five feet that way, about three and a half feet to three and a half feet this way. It holds 323 gallons of water. This door was the only thing that I purchased. I found a deal on a door. The door is nice and big. It's 23 by 18. You can really get big wood in. Basically, whatever you can lift, it'll go in there. It's running right now. The ash pan is down in here. The ash falls through the grates. Every 15th day, I have to pull the ash out. You get one of those wheel bushel baskets over there full every 15th day. The smokestack hangs down in the back so we trap all the heat up in the top. I don't, can you see those two pipes up in there? I'll talk more about those in the back later, but that's where the water is going down and back through the fire one more time for another heating. This has all been free steel that I got from people. I just made it up. That's a frame from a machine from work. The plate on the side is 3 16 thick. And like I say, we hold 323 gallons of water getting kind of warm standing here right now. We're probably going to close up the door. Let's take a walk around and we'll show you the back side of this thing. Same situation on this side. Got a door off the job site. This takes us into our, our plumbing and our electrical area. Those two tubes that you've seen coming through the back, across the top, is the water coming through. It's picking water up about this high, coming down, coming through here, and heading down. This line going into the house is coming back right here. It goes all the way to the other end of the tank on top, down a pipe, and through the bottom. So the cold water has to go up and go back around the, the firebox. The firebox was made out of a propane tank cut in half. It's 375 thousandths thick. It's not round. There's no there's not much weld cracks on it for anything to happen. This is our fill pipe. This is where we're putting the water in when we first set it up. We haven't used it since. This one over here is the same as this. It just drops right off in this corner and goes straight down here. So the water is always coming across the bottom. The exhaust had come up through that tube and I made a heat exchanger box that was four inches high, 36 inches wide, and 48 inches long. And the smoke travels horizontal and then goes up the stack. So I'm stealing as much heat out of the exhaust as possible. Over here is my Watlow set point controller. It's 175 degrees in here right now. We're, me we're in the water. We're measuring that off the side of the tank here. What it's doing is when it finds 180 degrees, it shuts off this solenoid, this blower. The solenoid shuts off the throttle body. By the way, that's a throttle body off of a 92 Chrysler minivan. It shuts it off so the air can't go in, shuts the blower off, and when that number gets down to 165, it turns right back on and cycles again. 
right now inside of this room it's 76 degrees in this room right now basically the water travels underground heads over to the house it's going 33 feet underground I only lose one degree all the way to the house well enough of this part I think I'll show you the inside This is the incoming water of the of the wood burner. The wood burner is 33 feet outside on the back wall over there. You got two lines coming in to the pumps and you got two lines leaving. The first line comes in, grabs onto the pump grabs onto it and sends it sends it over to the water heater. This is going to send it out to my shop. So I got two pumps running right now. And why I have my pumps in the house and not out by the wood burner is because I don't think these things are going to give me grief when I have my sandals on, if you know what I mean. So I decided to put them in the basement in case I ever had to work on them. This here is where I take my sample for my water to check to see where my pH is at in my water tank. I shoot to keep it at 7. This over here is my fill. I put that on my, on my uh, faucet down here and I can fill the added water, the, the needed water, into the wood burner through these lines. Now it comes over here and it grabs what I call a sidearm on the side of the water heater. So we're heating the hot water, we're coming in on the bottom, we're going right out again. And basically you just have a percolator effect going on here in this water heater and that's how you're heating the water up. The one line heads up on the top, gets involved over here, comes down, makes a turn and heads into the coil in the top of my furnace right here. The water is always running 24-7. When the house says it needs a little heat, it just turns on this blower and we, we suck the cold air returns out and push it up through here. I got heat radiating out up there right now at 110 degrees. It just constantly is just vaporing up there. So this comes down here and then we send it back to the wood burner. The other set of lines are heading over here We made a hole in the wall and we send it out to the garage. This is our temperature that is always telling us what our wood water is in our wood burner. My whole family uses this for a, for a reference here. We like to see between 165 and 180. And everybody when they leave in the morning they just take a look at this and that tells us if we got to put wood in or, or what's going on back there. But this water comes down and goes through the wall. Come on on this side here. That water is coming in right here, going through another radiator. This furnace here is heating this end of the house up on the top. There's an addition up there that's all glass, 524 square feet, and it's all glass. Very hard to heat in the wintertime. I never used it before until I put this system in. This also tends to leak some heat out of here and keep this room nice and warm. We're holding currently right now 78 degrees in this room right now. We can, we can have the door open all day long, whatever we want to do, and it, and it doesn't really affect us at all. This whole system cost me $3,334. I hand built it, and that's the price even with the concrete in the back there underneath the burner, right down to all this copper. That's my answer. That's my answer to cheap heat. See you later. I hope you enjoyed this video.